need for the user to define functions. Why do I need to define the functions? Why should I celebrate the functions? The first thing that you have to remember is the return time. The first thing is what? The return time. When it comes to return time, so for this P and T and R, I don't know the values, so I'm getting that from the arguments. So I will be dividing the main big program into small, small, independent modules. I have some code which will be executing. What is that I'm executing? I'm just printing from one to Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the next important session. My dear students, I have discussed what exactly arrays is all about, what exactly strings is all about. I think it's time for all of us to understand what exactly functions is all about. Yes, so why do we need to understand what exactly functions is all about? Yes, we have forgotten what exactly functions is all about due to this corona. We have stopped celebrating a lot of functions. Yes. I will be discussing about that functions in today's session. So guys, I welcome all of you once again. Let's check what is that I have in this session. I will be discussing about what exactly functions is all about. Followed by, I will be discussing the different types of functions. We, we keep a Ganesha, we celebrate Gauri, Ganesha, we celebrate Holi, we celebrate a lot of functions, right? So I will be discussing about different types of functions that we have, all right? So followed by, Need for the user defined functions. Why do I need to define the functions? Why should I celebrate the function? All right, so jokes apart. Uh, let's get into the session. So we are discussing these topics in this session. I want all of you to be serious. This is going to be very important topic for all of you. Let me start with the first thing. Whenever I say function, what exactly you call that as a functions? So. I have a program, so imagine a very beautiful program and I have, uh, it runs around you now pages. Will you like it to read the program or will you like it to understand the program? Obviously, no. If I ask you the reason why, so it's very lengthy, it's very difficult to remember, very difficult to debug, very difficult to trace, very difficult to understand. So difficult is a first word which will come out of your mouth. Then how do I make it easy? So let's think like this in a student perspective. So if I want to make it easy, I have to make it short and I have to make it simple. So that's what the solution that I have in the same way. So whenever I have the program, so if the program is bigger, it's very difficult for me to analyze, very difficult for me to identify the errors. So how do I make it? So I will be dividing the main big program into small, small, independent modules. Small, small, independent module in the sense, this subpart of the program is nowhere dependent on this subpart. This subpart of the program is nowhere dependent on this subpart. So I will divide the program in such a way that, so the subparts or the sub programs are not dependent. So anywhere you can use this functions, anywhere you can call this functions. So what is the idea of functions? You are dividing the main program or the big program into sub programs or the smaller programs. That concept is what I will call it as a functions. So fine, then how do I, uh, how do I understand this function? What is the use of this function? What are the benefits of this function? Let's check that. Guys, if I use the concept of functions, the first thing is, modularity modularity in the sense i will be able to divide the program into small small modules the word you need to remember small small modules okay modules in the sense the sub program is what i'm calling it as a modules so fine the second one is it provides the reusability reusability in the sense say for example you have written the sub program you can call n number of times anywhere so that is the advantage of this function. I have written a program to calculate the addition of two numbers. So for that, imagine I have spent around seven lines. I don't have to write the seven lines to calculate the addition of two numbers if I want to do that in the next program or in somewhere in a different part of the program. What does that have to do? I just have to call that function name. In one line, I will finish it instead of writing seven lines. So that is the advantage that I have with respect to function that is 
reusability. You can reuse the already defined function n number of times. That is the major thing that you need to understand. So fine. What is the next one that I have? Makes the program modification easy. So if I have the concept of functions, I will be able to do the modifications very comfortably, very easily. That's an important thing that I will have. And the last one that I have makes the program smaller and simpler. Since I'm dividing the modules where each module is independent from one another, obviously it will become very smaller. I will be dividing the module based on an individual task. Okay, so that's that's the major thing that I need to observe. Say for example, we are in a uh, you know, festival mode. Okay, let's say uh, your brother's marriage. In that, so what I will be doing, I will be assigning a task to each and everybody. Say for example, you are inserting the invitation card. So you are doing only that. You are not doing anything else. You, even you will not close it. You are assigned only to insert the card. The next person is inserting the card is it no he will close the card the next person he will uh, you know decorate the card the next person he will write the address of the guests to whom you want to invite like this i will be dividing the functions to perform only one task so that is the major thing that you need to remember if i divide like that obviously it will become simpler and the smallest that's the important thing that you need to observe here so fine you understood the different advantages that i have so what next then? How do I define the user defined functions? That is the major thing that you will have. This is the general syntax that you should never forget. So first thing that you have to remember is the written type. The first thing is what? The written type. When it comes to written type, majorly we will be using two famous written type. Most often we, we will be using two written types that is int, another one is void. I repeat int another one is void sir you said int is a data type of course i said int is a data type whenever you are declaring a variable but whenever you are using in this place int acts as a return type Int acts as a return type what is the speciality between int and void so please make a note of it if i am using int as my return type suppose in this place if i use int what is the meaning of it? This function returns some value outside the function. This function is going to give you something. Suppose if I use void, this function is not giving you anything. This function is not giving you anything is what you need to understand at this point of time. So fine, you understood about the return type. Sir, do I have only two? No, you have many, but I will be discussing with all of you right now only two. This is very important. You can have double, you can have uh, many other return types, which is not required at this part of time for all of you. So fine, you understood about the return type now. So what next? So as uh, we all know that we will have many functions in the program, then how do I identify which function that I want? So I will be giving a name to each and every function to identify that particular function uniquely. So that is the next thing that I have, that is function name. Whenever you are giving any function name, please do follow the rules which we follow whenever we are assigning the identifier. So fine, you understood two things. The first one that I have is all about the return type. The second one that I have is all about the function name. So fine, it's ready. Then uh, I have to use the parenthesis like this. I have to use the parenthesis. So inside this is what I will call it as a parameter list. What exactly parameter list is all about? Imagine I'm preparing a biryani. Okay. For biryani, what is that I need to put? So I need rice. I need vegetables. I need, if you are a non-vegetarian, so I need uh, non-veg. I need spicy things. I need a lot of things. I don't know. So I will call this as uh, ingredients. Can I call this as ingredients? Yes, of course. You can call this as ingredients. So that ingredients is what I will call it as a parameter list. So what is that you're doing inside the function? You're doing the biryani. All right. That's how you need to remember like this. All right. So what is the function name? Biryani is my function name. So what you are giving inside the parameter list? Ingredients are the parameter list. What are you preparing inside this? So you are preparing the biryani. This is how the function is working. Okay. So 
what is this return type sir if you are having inside your house so your return type should be void if you are giving that biryani to outside people so then your return type should be int that's what you need to remember so fine now you understood the syntax how do i define the user defined function well the next important thing that i have is very very important thing that is types of functions what exactly the type of function so to understand this concept this concept is very very important okay so remember this written type and remember this parameter list okay based on this i will be discussing the types of parameter so is it types of parameter no types of function i will be discussing the types of function so types of functions how many different types of functions do i have so when i have the functions i will have four different types of function in fact i have five i have not mentioned the last one that is recursion so i have four different functions right now which i will be discussing so what is the first function that i have very easy to remember so listen to me carefully i will give you the easy tricks to remember this function in fact this is a very important question from functions let's start this function with no arguments and no written values what is that function with no arguments and no written values how is it possible sir listen to me carefully no arguments and no written values you all know that if i write my written type as void then i don't i don't return any values let's write and check so what is the first one that i have function with no arguments and no written values say for example void okay function name is like let's see let's write it as sum i have to write the parameters inside this and whatever you want you can write your code here all right so that's not my problem now so observe carefully function with no arguments in a sense do i have any arguments here no i don't have parentheses are empty so fine i'm satisfying this no return values so i have two things int and void int will return void will not return so my return type is void so this is the first type of function that i have when it comes to the second one what is the second one that i have function with arguments function with arguments but no return values okay no return values in the sense void with arguments in the sense i will write int a so i have some arguments so am i satisfying the second one so with arguments do i have arguments here yes i have so no return value do i have void because no return value yes i am satisfying so this kind of function is the second one that is function with arguments and no return type what is the third one that i have please observe function with no argument with written type function with no argument with written type let's write that how do i write that what is the one function with no argument so i should not have any arguments fine what is that i have next with written values with written values in the sense what i should not have the void instead of that what is that i have to have so instead of that i should have int because it should return the values the same way what is the next one i have function with arguments and with written type so fine i have written type and i should have the arguments so this is the fourth type of function that i have so how many functions i have fourth type of function the fifth one that i have is recursion the function which calls again again itself that's what i will call it as a recursion function i repeat if the function is calling itself again and again then i will call that as a recursion function that is a fifth type of function that we have so let's check these functions one by one now so please observe uh, the function can you all identify what type of function that i have here so please understand function with no arguments do i have arguments here no i don't have so do i have written type here yes i have void so but it's not returning anything so this is the syntax that you need to remember so observe the syntax or a snippet that i have given here so function name is natural and the return type is void void in the sense what it is not returning any value and i don't have parameters inside this i have some code which will be executing what is that i'm executing i'm just printing from 1 to 10 all right so that's what i'm trying to print so nothing else i'm doing so fine 
So what are the next one that I have? Please observe the next one. What is the next type that I have? Function with arguments and no return type. Do I have arguments here? Yes, I have arguments. How many arguments I have? Three arguments I have. So fine. No return type. No return type in the sense what I should have? I should have void. So observe here. My return type is void and my function name is sum. How many parameters I'm passing? Three. So parameters in the sense three values you are passing inside this function. So utilizing that I'm doing something. All right. That's what you need to observe here. So fine. Int sum one. Let me take it as sum one. Okay. So sum one is equal to x plus y plus z. I'm just printing this value sum one. Okay. So let me just write it as sum one. All right. So fine. Addition of three things. Okay. Sum one. So this function is not returning any value. It is preparing this biryani. This is what I will call it as a biryani. To prepare this biryani, I'm taking this ingredients. But do you do you uh, give this biryani outside? No, I'm not giving it. I'm having it inside my home. Okay. That's what this is what I will call it as a home. So you are having it inside your home. All right. House. Whatever you call. Right. So that's what you need to observe here. My return type is void. So fine. So observe this carefully. What is the next one that I have? Functions with no arguments. Do I have arguments here? I don't have any arguments. So fine. And with return type, I should return some value. So my return type should be what? So my return type should be here. I should have it as int. So fine. Let's check that. So what is that I have here? I have int. So what is the function name? I have greatest. So fine. Do I have parameters? No. Then it should be no argument. Yes, of course. What is that I'm doing here? I'm checking two values. Which one is greater? So fine. Observe here. A is greater than B. If A is greater than B, I'm, I need to return the value outside to this function. That is A is greater. Suppose if not that, I will return B. So I'm not printing anything here. I'm returning some value out of this function. So that is what I need to observe in this example. In the same way, observe this function with arguments and with return type. So fine. Observe. I have float apart from void. If I have any other return type. So please understand that will return some value. So that's what I wanted to tell you at this point of time. So clear and clear. Look at the example. What is that I have? I have the return type and function name. And also I have the argument list. So how do I do that? So please observe, I'm calculating interest. So to calculate the interest, you need to have PTR, principal time rate. So you all know that. How do I calculate the simple interest? So for this P and T and R, I don't know the values. So I'm getting that from the arguments. So fine. After calculating it, am I printing it? No, I'm returning this value to outside the function. So that's what you need to understand, my dear darlings. So this is the different types of functions that we have. All right. So by this, I have come to an end of the concepts of different types of function. In my next session, I will show you some of the other concepts like how do I call the function and how do I uh, have the different types of parameters and all those things with the help of the program. So till then, take care. Bye bye.